Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to test three different filters for 868 MHz ISM band LoRa applications and these are cavity filters which are bigger and heavier but have lower insertion loss than surface acoustic wave or saw filters which have a very high insertion loss of about 4 dBs but they're tiny to put on circuit boards. <clears throat> I can't afford to lose that much transmit power um, so I'm using cavity filters. They also have a much better frequency response with much better cutoff rejection in the out-of-band regions. So um, the three filters, this is the biggest one and the heaviest one. It's actually silver plated and turned this nice color. Um, I don't know who the manufacturer is, but it's called an LTF-170B um, cavity filter, which is tunable. I'm not going to try to adjust it. It's already adjusted to the right frequency. Um, this one I call the small black filter, and I'll show you the websites where I got these from. There's my nano VNA that I'm going to do the, use to do the testing. And then the other third filter is this one, which is the one I'm going to call a large black filter, which is here in this box, in this node, and this is made by, uh, can I read that, Akason. These names are similar, aren't they? That's Akason, and this one is Sysmocom. So um, three different filters to test to see how they are in terms of um, passband insertion loss and out-of-band rejection. So um, let's move this one out of the way. I'm not going to show you all the tests that I'm going to do. I've already done them and written down the results. So what I'll do is just show you one simple test using the smallest filter because it's the easiest one to connect up. <clears throat> so here's the Nano VNA, which I'm going to show you uh, on the screen of the computer because it's not too easy to see uh, this small screen here. It's very reflective. Um, so what the Nano VNA does is it puts a signal out on port 1 and then it either measures the re reflected signal from this end of the cable back into port 1 and that's called S11 which is on this diagram here. So it can measure reflection loss or convert to SWR. <coughs> and what we're really interested in for this video is to measure the transmission through the filter. So there the signal comes out of port 1 goes into the filter. Let's connect it up now. <clears throat> so it'll go into one port of the filter. And these filters are symmetrical, of course, so it doesn't matter which is input and which is output. And they're going to be used for transmit and receive, which are two different directions anyway. So um, the signal goes, the test signal goes into port one, which is a sweeping signal through a frequency range, as you'll see. What comes out on this other side of the filter is connected to port two on the VNA. And port two is the input. <coughs> so there's a signal that comes out of port 1, goes through the filter back into port 2 and the frequency sweeps and we can measure the insertion loss and the return loss. And already you can see on the nano VNA <coughs> that the, uh, the blue curve is the transmission through the filter, that's S21, and the yellow curve with the dip at the resonant frequency or in the passband is the reflection return loss which is called S11 but I'll show you these on the computer screen so we can get a, a better view so I'm going to switch to that now the large black filter as I'm going to refer to it <coughs> is this one manufactured by Akason and it comes from a shop called Hand Parts <coughs> in Czech Republic unfortunately out of stock at the moment I bought the last one <laughs> hopefully they'll come back into stock one day and um, the small black filter <coughs> which is this one this is from a manufacturer called Sysmocom or a shop. I'm never sure who makes these things. And this one anyway is in Germany, in Berlin. It's rather cheaper than the first filter I showed you. I'm going to refer to this one as a small black filter. And the third one, the silver one, is um, via eBay from Italy. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to test those three different filters and I'm going to be using the Nano VNA Saver software, which is currently running on this computer. Let me just, no, no, no it's recording. <clears throat> okay, so um, from the, uh, another video where I showed how to set this up, I've still got the center frequency set to 869 megahertz, which is close to the frequency per mesh tastic and reticulum, span of 100 megahertz. So the span from left to right here is 100 megahertz. <clears throat> center frequency is 869 megahertz. And S21 is the transmission on the analyzer from port one to port two. So that's going through the filter as I show you how it's connected up. And S11 is the reflection from one port of the filter measured 
reflected back into port one of the analyzer, which is probably less exciting to look at. Um, it's not currently sweeping, so let's turn that on and press sweep here, and hopefully it will start to make measurements. Yes, it started. It's currently connected, remember, to the small black filter from Sysmacom. And here you can see the bandpass response of the filter. 869 MHz is in the center. And um, markers, let's put a marker somewhere. Marker number one, let's put it in here. And you can see the S21 gain is negative because it's actually a loss of about 0 0.5 dBs. So what that means is the insertion loss in the passband of the filter is half a dB, which is very acceptable. <coughs> low insertion loss, I like that. And you can see that um, the skirts of the passband go down and outside the passband when we're a long way out, <coughs> well, 900 megahertz or so down up there and uh, whatever that is, then you can see it's minus 60 dBs or so. So that's the, the rejection loss of unwanted signals outside the passband <coughs> is minus 60 dBs. The worst one where I am at the moment is at 935 megahertz, which is way out off this side. So that's a 60 dB loss which is a useful amount of loss to have. I think it's a million times, isn't it? Um, here's the return loss from the filter, so that's how well matched it is. <coughs> Minus 25 dB is a very healthy return loss. Corresponds to an SWR of one point, not very much. So the filter works, as you can see. What you can do with this software is you can do an automated analysis. If I click the button, I haven't done this before on this particular machine, so it's not set up. <coughs> I'm measuring a bandpass filter. I want to run it automatically. Let's hit run, and what has it done? Oh, it's put some markers on here. That's nice. So um, it's measuring the cutoff frequency. Um, it's measured the center frequency of the filter. It's come out as, call it, 867 megahertz. Bandwidth is 18 dBs. Q factor, you don't really need to worry about. The bandwidth of the filter is measured at 20 megahertz, and that is measured automatically between the 3 dB cutoff points. That's... Uh, marker number one and number two. Unfortunately, there aren't enough sample points <coughs> to hit three dBs on the spot. So it's actually 4.6 dB cutoff points, which is uh, not a normal figure to take. So the three dB cutoff points will be narrower than these. Um, this is an automated measurement. I tried to change this and uh, I can't seem to get more points. Maybe someone else knows how to do that so that you can actually measure the three dB bandwidth and so on. So. Um, this seems to work nicely, has a nice frequency response, has a very acceptable insertion loss, and is providing a nice match. What I'm going to do now is just go to a table that I made of results from the three different kinds of filters to save time. So um, that is here. I've got the small black filter currently connected with its 0 0.5 dB insertion loss and rejection of 60 dBs and center of 867 megahertz. 3 dB bandwidth is 18, last time I measured it. <clears throat> it depends on uh, one or two factors, but it's it's not to me so important, as long as the um, the frequency that I'm using of 869.525 megahertz is within the passband, then it's fine. Um, when we compare filters now, the large black filter, <clears throat> which is more expensive, actually seems to have an insertion loss of around 1 dB, so that's uh, that's a bit higher but it does provide a better rejection, 70 dB, not 60, in the out-of-band frequencies. So um, maybe that's better at rejecting unwanted interference. And the bandwidth is very similar, 17 dB between the 3 dB points, which are actually 4.6, but never mind. Um, the third filter is the large silver one. Um, looks a bit like a part of a steam engine <laughs> to some people, perhaps. This one has an insertion loss between these two values of 0 0.7 dB, which is also very acceptable. Um, but it obviously has a higher quality. Um, I don't know if it has more cavities or not, looking at it, perhaps it doesn't, but it's silver plated, has a higher Q quality factor, and this gives a rejection then of 80 dBs in those out of band frequencies. Um, the return loss is a bit higher, only 15 dBs, <coughs> which is still acceptable, but it's not quite such a good match as these other two filters. And center frequency. Again, approximately 8.67 megahertz, it's a bit narrower, 11, dB, uh, 11 uh, megahertz rather than 17 or 18, but it still includes the frequency of interest, 8.69 decimal 525, I think it is, I keep forgetting. So um, that's like a ranking of the filters. 
Um, also in terms of size, the small one is smaller and the silver one is very black and weighs probably several kilos. I haven't weighed it, it's quite a monster, but it gives the best rejection, the highest rejection loss out of band and the insertion loss is less than 1 dB. <coughs> um, so yeah, it depends on uh, what priorities you have, whether you're interested in low insertion loss to get maximum transmit power and maximum receive sensitivity, but then you may suffer from uh, interference from nearby cell towers and so on, which was my problem that got me interested in filters, or you then use this filter with a higher rejection, don't worry about having a bit more insertion loss because this uh, solved a lot of problems. So I'll be testing these three filters on a node at some point and, and measuring signal quality to a, a nearby node a few kilometers away to see how they improve the uh, quality of connection. So that's all for now. I look forward to reading your comments and hopefully you can answer the questions I had. I'll try and answer your questions and I'll see you in the next video.